Hello, my name is Simon Zhang. I'm the author of Ripster++, and this is a tutorial on Ripster++. To begin with, I would like to acknowledge the following four people. Dr. Ha Wang and Dr. Mumbai Xiao are co-authors of Ripster++, both from Ohio State. And Birkin Gukbag and Ryan DeMille were undergraduate students at Ohio State when they helped build the Python binding for Ripster++, making it extremely easy to use. They're both PhD students at Ohio State now. This research, research would not be possible without these people. What is Ripser? It computes Vitoris Rips persistence barcodes. It's written by Professor Ulrich Bauer from TU Munich. It's open source, and one of its main important advantages is that it efficiently allocates and uses memory. In addition to good implementation, it uses many mathematical properties of Vitoris Rips persistence barcodes to achieve memory efficiency. Its limits are that it's sequential on a single core and it does not fully utilize all properties of Vitoris Rips persistence barcode computation. So we asked the question, can we build upon the merits of Ripser to achieve even better performance with GPU? This figure shows two groups of computing performance over 40 years, from 1980 to 2020. The blue dots and curve represents the CPU performance, which follows Moore's law. It shows that the CPU performance doubles every one and a half years. However, the performance growth has almost stopped recently. The green curve represents the GPU performance starting at, in 2007, and its growth momentum is still strong. You have no choice but to introduce GPU accelerated computing for the continued growth of TDA and com computational geometry for the future. Let us compare an Intel processor core i7 in 2014 and one in 2018. The one in 2014 was CPU only, while the one from 2018 is a GPU CPU hybrid. If we only use CPU today, the computing performance is lower than that in the 2014 processor. Computing must be accelerated by GPU today for continued performance improvements. If you don't have a GPU, don't worry. GPUs are free on the cloud. With Google Colab, high-performance GPUs are available for, for use from any device on a browser. In particular, we can run Ripster++ on our cell phone. All you need is a Google account, and you can use Google Colab for free and therefore run Ripster++ for free. There are four key components to accelerated performance of Ripster++. Ripster++ ultimately performs the original matrix reduction algorithm of Ripster for persistent homology in order to compute the barcodes exactly. This is something to keep in mind as we go over further optimizations we design. The first two components, efficient filtration construction with clearing and finding apparent pairs will be discussed in subsequent slides. An important concept of Ripster++ is that of a submatrix, a much smaller matrix for matrix reduction. So the submatrix is determined by these first two components. The efficient hash map involves writing massively in parallel to GPU that the large number of apparent pairs followed by a two layer hash map designed for matrix reduction on a submatrix with the apparent and clear symbols of the filtration eliminated. A GPU-CPU hybrid is used to best utilize each hardware's capabilities. In particular, sub-matrix reductions performed on CPU. For more details, see the Sausage 2020 paper mentioned here. More details about the first two components. The first component is the construction of the simplex-wise flag filtration from the Vitoris filtration massively in parallel. We utilize the clearing limit to eliminate simple seeds whose co-boundary will zero during matrix reduction. We utilize the, com the com combinatorial index represents simple seeds by a single integer. Single integer for each simplex. This common trail index greatly reduces memory accesses and allows them to be coalesced on GPU. We find apparent pairs massively in parallel on GPU for matrix reduction on a small submatrix to be computed on CPU. I will go over the three terms, Vitor Swift filtration, simplex wise flag filtration, and apparent pairs in subsequent slides. What is the Vitor Swift filtration? Let's be a set of points with an underlying metric. For every real t, define a Vitor Swift complex by a set of sequences in x with diameter at most t. The, in the increasing sequence of Vitor Swift complex is indexed by t in order by inclusions from the Vitor Swift filtration. Here's an illustration of the Vitor Swift filtration of diameter values 0, 1, 2, and 3. Diameter value 0 involves the point, original point cloud. As we can see, the one skeletons are strictly growing in number of edges as we increase the diameters.
Simplex wise, flag filtration is defined by the ordering, the sequence of cliques determined by edges introduced over time by the Vitoris Rips filtration ordering. For example, here we have a graph of edges and points as vertices. And upon increasing the diameter value, we introduce a single edge, ignoring ties. There are ties, we order them arbitrarily, such as by the combinatorial index. No clique is formed in this case. But in general, for clique forms, we add these one at a time to the, the simplex wise flag filtration. Ties are broken by the dimension of the clique followed by the combinatorial index. Eventually, we end up with a sequence of simplicial complexes, each one larger than the next one by one simplex. The seemingly sequential process is, ma is computed massively in parallel on GPU and RIPSR++. Apparent pairs are easily identifiable zero persistence pairs. The orange edges each form an apparent pair with an unshown triangle. Apparent pairs are persistent pairs whose simplices are closest to each other in simplex wise fil flag filtration order. They can be found, they can be found efficiently by manip manipulation of the co combinatorial indices of simplex co-boundary and boundary simplices. The co-boundary and boundary simplices suffice to determine whether a simplex pair is with another simplex as an apparent pair. There are known to be a large number of these apparent pairs. Due to this fact, we have then that the submatrix for submatrix reduction is usually very, very small. This allows for very fast computation. Let's use RIPSR++ for a statistical application. We will do the following experiment. We estimate the expected persistence diagram by sample average of persistence diagrams. RIPSR++ is used here to, due to its effectiveness that other softwares are not able to achieve even at the simple scale, primarily for computing the persistence diagrams. Given a point cloud X, let DGM of X denote a persistence diagram. The output of the persistence algorithm works with plus plus, which is supported on the half plane omega. Let's script X of N denote a, a random point cloud on endpoint sampled IID with respect to some fixed underlying distribution C. It is a random variable along with DGM of script X of N. Let's redefine a persistence diagram as the sum of Dirac measures on omega not involving the diagonal as DGM of Y equals the sum of Dirac centered at points in DGM of Y or why is a point cloud. Furthermore, define the persistence sub P of a persistence diagram to be the sum of the distances to the diagonal X equal to Y, the line X equal to Y of all points in the persistence diagram. We're using here the Euclidean distance between two points. Define the expected persistence diagram or EPD of distribution P, capital P of persistence diagrams on convex subject K of omega as the expected number of points in persistence diagram mu that belongs to K where mu follows distribution capital P. Here we have the following lemma that determines convergence of the sample average of persistence diagram to the EPD whose proof depends on the strong law of large numbers. It states the following, let capital B be a probability distribution on the space of persistence diagrams with expected persistence finite over mu sampled from capital P. Let mu sub k be a sequence of IID variables of law capital P. Let mu sub k bar be the sample average of mu's. Then we have that OTP of mu k bar and EPD of capital P converges to zero as k goes to infinity almost surely, where OTP is just the P Wasserstein distance between persistence diagrams. Referring to the previous lemma, let capital P be the distribution on random persistence diagrams induced by random point clouds on n points with point sampled from law C. To find the sample average of persistent diagrams as DGM bar, and let script X of N of K be the kth endpoint random point cloud. Assuming the expected persistence of persistent diagrams following capital P is bounded, by the lemma we have that DGM bar converges to EPD of capital P with respect to the P Wasserstein distance between persistent diagrams almost surely. We now transition to running, to running the Google Colab notebook from RIPSR++ to compute an estimation of the EPD for RIPS persistent diagrams for a simple example involving subsamples of 2,000 points sampled on a slightly noisy circle. For this notebook, originally formulated in Goody's GitHub page rewritten for RIPS diagrams by me, Goody runs out of memory, RIPSR.py runs for about seven minutes, and RIPSR++ takes three minutes total time. Let's go now to the notebook. Here is the notebook for the statistical experiment. In it, I explain what I have just explained in the slides for this first part here. So we're going to skip over this since I already talked about this in the slides. 
And here we have the experiment and the overview, which I'll go over right now. Consider a point cloud with n points splitting into 1 minus p times n points sampled on a nice distribution, namely a simple circle and p times n outliers, where p is a small proportion of outliers. Call x true and x about these two point clouds. Simple circle is chosen since it simplifies the visualization and gives extremely understandable results. A large point cloud x should represent the underlying slightly noised distribution C, namely slightly noisy circle. Continue directly the Vittorius Rips complex diagram of the whole point cloud x to reflect the distribution of persistent diagrams capital P. Subsampling smaller point clouds from X and computing their Vittorius Rips persistent diagram for one-dimensional persistent homology, then averaging, we obtain an estimator of EPD of capital P as determined by the lemma given before. As the distributions capital P and the distribution of the diagrams of the simple circle are similar in the Wasserstein sense, so should be their expected diagrams. The smaller the proportion of outliers, the more similar the expected persistence diagrams. This follows by the Wasserstein stability of expected persistence diagrams. Since the sample averages converge to EPD of capital P in the Wasserstein sense, by the triangle inequality on the Wasserstein metric, the average persistence diagram of capital X should be similar to the EPD of the distribution of persistence diagrams for a fixed number of points on this fixed circle, which should predict predictably be centered around a single point in the persistence diagram, representing the dimension one persistent homology of a circle. So all that being said, let's go ahead and start running the notebook. Before running, make sure you have the right runtime type. In this case, I already have it correctly set as GPU and standard. So the hardware accelerator needs to be GPU. You have this for free if you have a Google account. Otherwise, uh, if you have Google Colab, you'll have GPU as well as uh, uh, TP. Well, TPU will also be available for those without Google Colab Pro. If you have Google Colab Pro, you can set the runtime type, runtime shape to standard or high RAM. We won't need high RAM in this case because we have uh, all that. It's just not that much computation. So standard should be enough. And uh, Google Colab Pro doesn't offer, it just offers more time for computation mostly. And it gives you higher priority for GPUs. That's the primary difference. And it also has this uh, uh, availability for high RAM. So we're computing Ribser uh, plus plus for this uh, statistical experiment. We have to install some software first. We have uh, installation of Ribser, Ribser plus plus, Goody, CM dash super, DVIPNG, text live, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Ribser and Goody are not needed for computation. However, they're needed for compatibility for this notebook. So we just install them. Ribser plus plus is installed with this command here, pip space install space ripster plus plus no spaces no dashes no underscores for ripster plus plus this should install the wheel on linux uh google colab runs linux for windows this should also work you should be able to install the wheel cm dash super and dvi png text live the, these libraries are used for uh in, for visualization purposes for the diagrams so we've already installed everything here we're, we're going to import the module Ripser++. So the way to do it is like so: you you import Ripser++ as, and you give your alias. In this case, we're going to call it RPP. Keep in mind, Ripser++ has no spaces, dashes, or underscores, and it's and it's uh it's in the string. Now, as for actually calling Ripser++, the the actually calling the diagram computation from Ripser++, what we do is we call the the run function from the the from the module. So our alias is RPP, so we have rpp.run, the, the function that we need to call. And it takes two arguments, a string and a numpy array. The string tells you what the flags are for the computation in Ripster++. So if you have uh, Ripster++ running on the command line, you would normally write in these flags. And that's what we write here. So for example, we have dash dash format point dash cloud dash dash dimension one. So the point dash cloud tells us that X should be of type a NumPy array of two dimensions made up of points. And this is what we have for point clouds. And the output of run should be a, a dictionary. It's indexed by dimensions. And for each dimension, we have a two dimensional, we, ha we have a NumPy array made up of 
pairs. So it's not a two-dimensional NumPy array, but we, that's what we want to make it and reshape it to. That's what goes on over here. We're changing everything to a NumPy array from the two from the array of tuples to just a NumPy array of this shape here. So we do that for compatibility purposes, uh, and that's how we're going to use RIPs or plus plus. As for the actual computation for this experiment, what we're going to do is we're going to sample 2,000 points from a slightly noisy distribution C. There are 14 noise points. A visualization of the, of the points is here. Uh, notice that P is very small, and that says the distribution C and the distribution of the circle should be very close in the Wasser sign sense. We use this fact along with the stability of persistent diagrams to conclude that the EPD of capital P should be most like mostly like the EPD of the distribution coming from the persistence of a perfect circle, namely the, this, the circle that we're forming here. So, so what we should see is we should have something that looks like, um, look, it looks like uh, points, looks like uh, the points all gather towards a single point in the histogram that represents the EPD. So, we have the following computation here. Uh, it's already run. Uh, Goody runs for out of memory for these 2,000 points. Ripple.py runs for four minutes, 40 seconds. Ripple.py runs for two minutes for the, computa for the computation of these two uh, calls to Ripster, to, to computing Rips complexes. Here we have another computation which is already finished. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to compute the expected persistence diagram. And the way we do that is we have 5,000 times of sam subsampling 100 points from the 2,000 point cloud. For each 100 point subsample, we compute a persistence diagram and take an average of these persistence diagrams. So this example is just a simple circle. We shouldn't have too many iterations to find out. The EPD on the right-hand side that we're going to show right here. That the, that the EPD on the right-hand side of this slightly noisy circle and the original persistence diagram on the, the 1,986 points of the perfect circle, sh circle should be very similar. Certainly, the persistence diagram of the perfect circle should pre predictably be centered around a single point in the persistence diagram, like I was saying before, representing its dimension one persistent homology. Notice that there is some noise in the expected persistence diagram right over here, right? Since the original point cloud distribution was a slightly noisy circle. But do keep in mind, the histogram is mostly centered about this, this one point here, which looks like the true diagram here, due to the stability property that I mentioned before, the Wasserstein stability. Let's conclude the experiment. Of course, Ripsor++ plus plus can be used for much more useful things other than just taking an average for the EPD, such as uh, you know, for neural networks, where many persistent diagrams need to be computed repeatedly over a long period of time. It should also be noted that persistent landscapes actually satisfy the strong law of large numbers that the limit of a large sample average of persistent landscapes converges to a persistent landscape almost surely under some finiteness conditions. Convergence is much nicer for persistent landscapes than for persistent la diagrams. EPD, for example, is not a persistent diagram. Thanks for watching and thanks for your attention. This concludes the tutorial.